This is one of my favorite physics puzzle objects. I made a video about it seven years ago and I've been trying to get version 2.0 working ever since. The trick is that there are two liquids in the bottle that don't mix. One is not soluble in the other. So when you shake it, it creates an emulsion where droplets of one liquid are floating in the other. The density of the emulsion is halfway between the density of the top liquid and the bottom liquid. And the densities of the beads are chosen so that they sit at the top and bottom of the emulsion. So as the emulsion separates, the beads slowly come together. And the improvement that I've been trying to make is to upgrade it to three liquids. With three different liquids, I need four different densities of beads, a pair for the top emulsion and a pair for the bottom emulsion. In the process of trying to work it out, I discovered all sorts of weird behavior. The first challenge is how do you find three liquids that are all insoluble with each other? Like my basic understanding was always that non-polar liquids mix together and polar liquids mix together, but non-polar liquids and polar liquids do not mix with each other. So if I already have two liquids that don't mix, it must be that one is polar and the other isn't. So any third liquid that I bring in will surely be soluble in one or the other. And it turns out the answer was staring me in the face the whole time. Because actually both liquids in my original video are polar and they're not mixing. The bottom liquid is salt water and the top liquid is isopropyl alcohol. Water and isopropyl alcohol are both polar, so they should mix together. But when you add salt, it binds to the water molecules more strongly than the isopropyl alcohol can. And so the IPA gets rejected from the solution. That's called salting out and chemists use it all the time. So with two separate polar liquids, all I have to do is add a non-polar liquid. In other words, an oil. And there you go, look, sunflower oil sits between the two and I can shake it up as much as I like and once I set it down, the three liquids separate again. I could even use dyes that preferentially dissolve in the different liquids to create three really distinct colors. That's pretty cool, isn't it? But what I'm trying to do is create a three liquid version of this thing. With this thing, the trick is that you don't know there are separate liquids until it's explained. That's the point of the physics puzzle here. So I need my oil to be clear. And that's not the only criteria. Here's what I'm thinking. So the density of isopropyl alcohol is here. The density of salt water is here. You'll notice I've flipped the Y axis upside down so that more dense things sink to the bottom of the graph. I was getting so confused before I did that. So the density of the oil that I choose needs to be somewhere between these two, but actually I want it to be as close to the middle as possible. That's because I need to fit different bead densities in here as well. Like if the density of the oil was too close to that of IPA, I wouldn't have much room to fit different bead densities in here by like looking at the densities of different plastics. I eventually found MCT oil. It has a really great density and it's clear, but the flipping stuff is soluble in IPA. I tried various other alcohols and acetone, but they all dissolved MCT oil. In the end, I just couldn't find a clear oil that sat nicely in a good position on the density scale. Spoiler alert though, I did find something in the end. So I thought, well, let's try and get it working with the clearest oil that I can find that's about the right density, which is vegetable oil. Specifically, sunflower oil is quite clear. So sunflower oil is here, meaning the emulsion of sunflower oil with IPA is here, and the emulsion of oil and salt water sits here. So I need to find beads with densities that go in all these gaps. So I looked up the densities of various different plastics and it seemed like there were a few options, but actually only really one option that sits at the top of the oil IPA emulsion, that's polymethyl pentane. I ended up spending $100 on this pack of 100 beads and I've got low density polyethylene, I've got nylon in there as well and high impact polystyrene. And before I could figure out where it was possible to purchase polymethyl pentane balls for $1 each, I was looking at the densities of different woods and actually there's this rosewood, specifically rosewood from Brazil that seemed to have the right density. Brazilian rosewood is used to make guitar fretboards, so I bought a guitar fretboard blank and laser cut a little square out of it. And when I put them in there, they all went to the wrong places. It's so annoying because what I didn't account for was the fact that when you add salt water and oil and isopropyl alcohol together, the densities change. The oil and the salt water don't change much, but the isopropyl alcohol becomes significantly more dense. So actually my graph looks like this, which explains why the polymethyl pentane is up here. It doesn't explain why the rosewood's down here though. 
I wonder if it's not real Woeswood or if it's not the good stuff from Brazil. But anyway, it was back to the drawing board for me. And at this point, Professor Dave Ricketts had the brilliant idea of 3D printing the beads. The most commonly used filament, PLA, has a density of about 1.36 grams per milliliter and a bulk density of a little less than that when it comes off the printer. But with a 3D printer, I can just make sure there's a cavity inside and I can tune the size of the cavity to get the bulk density that I need. I calculate roughly the size of the cavity that I would want but I didn't calculate all the different sizes that I would need that's because well I'm not sure that my 3d printer has that kind of precision and I'm not sure my density measurements have that kind of precision either so I just printed a whole range around roughly the right size to see what they would do one thing that I didn't expect was the way that the emulsions separate from each other like when you first shake it, it's an emulsion of three different things. I would then expect that to separate into two emulsions with a layer of oil in between. But actually it seems like the salt water and IPA form a much better emulsion than the oil does with either. So it's slower to separate and it's less dense than the oil. So we actually have an IPA salt water emulsion down here below the oil. And as they separate into pure salt water and IPA, the IPA has to bubble up through the oil I imagine that would change the bead density calculation somewhat, but it doesn't matter really because we're doing it all by trial and error anyway. Surprisingly, the 3D printed beads seem to change density over time as they're left in the bottle. And it's been really hard to tune the beads so that they sit at the top and the bottom of the oil IPA emulsion. So I was playing around with that for a while when I realized if I was using the wrong density of IPA when I was searching for an appropriate oil, Maybe I should take another look at that. And it turns out mineral oil is actually less dense than the IPA in the bottle. It's not less dense than pure isopropyl alcohol, but it is less dense than this stuff. So the oil sits on top. And this is great because now the salt water and isopropyl alcohol are back together. And we already have a pair of bead densities that we know work, the beads from the original video. I think they're low density polyethylene on top and high impact polystyrene on the bottom. Looking at the graph now, it's a little tight to try and 3D print beads that will sit where I want them to. So before I started trying to figure that out, I decided to try and fix a couple of things. The first thing is when you add the three things together, the IPA always goes cloudy and it stays that way even after everything is separated. The second thing is when you shake it up, the whole thing goes really cloudy until it all separates, which doesn't happen in the original puzzle. That's because the refractive index of isopropyl alcohol and salt water are really close together. So even though the emulsion is made of tiny droplets of isopropyl alcohol suspended in water, it doesn't disturb the path of light too much on its way through the emulsion and so it doesn't go too cloudy. Whereas oil has a very different refractive index and so light bounces around like crazy through the emulsion. I'll refer you to my video titled Why White Things Are White for an explanation of that. So I just went nuts trying different combinations of things and eventually I found something brilliant. Acetone, salt water and this stuff. It says paraffin on the side, but who knows? It's something I had lying around after my black flame video. What's great about this combination is none of the liquids retain any cloudiness after separating. But even better than that, there's a really clear distinction between the emulsions. The top one is oil and acetone, and the bottom one is acetone and salt water. The emulsions are still quite cloudy, but I'm going to take it as a win. We're dealing with fairly nasty chemicals now, so this is for responsible adults only if you want to try it at home. Something I was quite pleased about with this setup was that I now actually had a use once more for those expensive red balls. They sit perfectly just there. But it turns out that if I put loads of them in there, they kind of stick to the beads down here, which is really annoying. Acetone has about the same density as IPA and also increases its density in a similar way to IPA when mixed with salt water. So I need to print cubes with densities here and here which is tight but doable. But I do need to be careful with the filament I use. I noticed in earlier testing, for example, that whatever these things are made of just melt in acetone. It's not surprising really when you consider that acetone is used for dissolving all sorts of things. It also messes up whatever coating is on the outside of these bottles, so I have to be really careful when I'm pouring. Acetone also melts the blue beads from the original bottle, which is a bit annoying, but I found that perla beads have a similar density. I think they're made of low density polyethylene and they seem to be immune to acetone. 
PLA also seems to dissolve or at least soften in acetone. So I've switched to PETG, specifically white PETG, because the color ran from all other filaments that I tried. And with some monumental faffing about, I ended up with this thing. You might be wondering what those beads at the bottom are. Well, I discovered that high impact polystyrene is not dense enough and that polypropylene is too dense and sinks to the very bottom. But in my testing, sometimes they stuck together in clumps. And when they did, they sat in that sweet spot. Polypropylene melts at about 170 degrees centigrade. So I made some plastic sausages and sliced them into these weird beads. It's not perfect. Like some of the white cubes I printed get stuck below the blue beads and can't make it back up to where they should be. But you know, you've got some white cubes at the top of the top emulsion and some at the bottom of the top emulsion. They get stuck here and there. I'll probably continue making incremental improvements as I have new ideas, but for now I'm pretty happy with this. This video is a good example of how some builds can be more frustrating than others. And it got me thinking, you know, I love building stuff with my kids and it's interesting to see how they're still learning to deal with frustration in those situations. Like it's okay to quit sometimes because I can see that they're getting more resilient to it over time. And it's why I've had a KiwiCo subscription for so long and why I'm happy for them to sponsor my videos. Like having a STEM project that comes in the post every month where you just know everything you need is going to be in the box, that's just great. It's been designed by experts to inspire excitement, curiosity and moments of discovery. My kids still get frustrated sometimes, but they always overcome it by themselves. And like, I know exactly how they're feeling in those moments. And it's such a good feeling. I get the Kiwi crate for my son and the Tinker crate for my daughter, but there's a crate for every possible age. And actually, I also get the Eureka crate, which is too old for my kids, but that's the one that we do together. And that's where I really see them kind of flexing their growth mindset and overcoming challenges. And it's one of the most fun things I do with them. Look at the replay value on this one. It's not just a chaotic pendulum tracer. It's also that game that I'm like annoyingly bad at where you've got to try and get the thing around the maze, but the controls are weird. If you're not ready for a subscription, you can buy individual crates too. But if you are ready for a subscription, the deal on this one is really good. If you go to kiwico.com forward slash Steve Mould and use promo code Steve Mould at checkout, you'll get 50% off your first month. The link is also in the description. So check out KiwiCo today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next.